This is the Southeast Asia region. This Asian region consists of 11 countries. Here you can find a country that is considered one of the richest in the world, and that is Singapore. But in this same region, you can also find countries that are below the poverty line and still labeled as poor countries. And one of these poor countries is the Philippines. A long time ago, the Philippines was richer than Singapore. Though it was still poor way back then, this country had the potential to be one of the richest. And believe me when I say that the Philippines should be as rich a country as Singapore today. But what happened? Why does the Philippines remain poor? What are the real reasons why this nation cannot overcome poverty? Why is Singapore rich compared to the Philippines if they had the same potential to begin with? Well, for us to understand this topic better, let's first have a little flashback of Philippine history. You know, there was a time when the Philippine peso was almost equal to the US dollar. As of today, one US dollar is equivalent to 55 to 56 Philippine pesos. But did you know that almost 60 years ago, around the presidency of Diosdado Macapagal, the exchange rate of peso to dollar was two to one? It means that two Philippine pesos were equal to one US dollar. But how does it matter though? Well, you see, the US dollar is the world currency, meaning this currency is the standard when you want to get the true value of every currency in the world. So, if your currency is nearly equal to the US dollar, it only means that it is almost as valuable as the US dollar itself. And that was the Philippine peso way back then. But that was short-lived. During the Marcos regime, its value sank from 2 pesos to 3.7 pesos against the dollar. And since then, the value of the peso has never recovered to its original value. So today, it reached 56 pesos per dollar. The Philippine currency gradually losing its value against the US dollar is a clear indication that this country is not progressing. The way to measure a country's wealth is by its GDP per capita. The higher the GDP per capita, the richer the country. And Singapore is the richest country not only in Southeast Asia, but in the whole of Asia for having the highest GDP per capita, which is around $91,000. But wait, what is GDP? Well, it is the gross domestic product or the total cost for all the products and services that a country spent for a whole year. And when we say GDP per capita, we are talking about per person meaning the total amount of a country's GDP was divided by the total population of that specific country. So, in other words, in Singapore, on average, every person living there spends $91,000 every year. Of course, I'm not saying that every Singaporean actually spends that kind of money every year. Most of them do not. But some of them actually spend way more than that. So on average, the GDP per capita of Singapore is so high. And if we think about it, the reasons that they have that high GDP per capita are that they have the best economy, and at the same time, they have a small population. Impressive, right? But what about the Philippines? Well, the GDP per capita of this country is only around $4,017. It is way too low compared to Singapore's $91,000. Okay, I guess Singapore is too much to use as a comparison. So let's compare the Philippines to its neighboring countries. Indonesia has $5,051 GDP per capita, while Thailand has $7,073 GDP per capita. These three countries are all almost the same. Their economy relies on their natural resources. Their geographies are almost the same, since they all have the same access to the ocean. But why is the Philippines left behind? Why is it that, even with the abundance of natural resources, the Philippines still poor after so many years? Now, to help us understand more about the situation in the Philippines, let's again compare it to Singapore. The Philippines and Singapore are both victims of colonialism. Both countries suffered a lot from colonial rule. Singapore has been colonized by the British Empire for many years. 
On the other hand, the Philippines has also been colonized by different nations or empires. There is no denying that even after these countries became independent, they could hardly recover from the damage and losses of colonization, meaning both Singapore and the Philippines started from the lowest poverty line. Both countries strive to progress, and of course both countries want to progress. But the problem is that they got different results. Why though? Well, the quick answer is the bad governance, corruption and political dynasties that have dominated the Philippines for many years. You see, right after they gained independence, Singapore got its own leader, which was from their own people, and that was Lee Kuan Yew. The Philippines also got their own president after independence, and that was Manuel Rojas. By the way, Emilio Aguinaldo was the first president of the Philippines, but Manuel Rojas was the first president after the Philippines became independent. Anyway, from the very beginning, Singapore was fortunate to have its first genuine leader to serve its people and nation. Well, of course, I'm not saying that Manuel Rojas was not a good leader, but he and other presidents of the Philippines failed to accomplish as much as Lee Kuan Yew had accomplished. And I'm talking about destroying the corruption. The first thing that Lee Kuan Yew did was to make sure that there would be no corruption in his administration. He definitely made sure that every public servant of the country, from the lowest to the highest position, was not corrupt. But then again, the corruption rate was not zero in Singapore during his term, but it was very low, not only in the Asia, but in all countries in the world. What he did was he founded the CPIB, or the Corrupt Practices Investigation Bureau, and the sole purpose of this agency is to fight corruption. And it was really effective. They combated corruption not only in the public sector, but in the private sector as well. On the contrary, the corruption rate in the Philippines keeps surging. As a matter of fact, in 2023, the Philippines ranked as the 115th least corrupt nation out of 180 countries, meaning this country is one of those countries where corruption is rampant. The second key to Singapore's success is its meritocratic system. This system was also established during the Lee Kuan Yew administration. The idea of this system is simple, yet very effective. They will only select leaders or government officials based on their merits. You cannot run for the candidacy as a government official if your background is not excellent. Only those people with a good educational background and a clean life record can become the public servants of Singapore. But again, in the Philippines, anyone can run from the lowest to the highest position in their government. Well, it was just quite normal though, for a democratic country, right? Anyone can have the right to become the leader of the country. But that is the main issue here, because the Philippines has no meritocratic system. Anyone can run for a spot in the government. Even those people who do not finish their education can run. Even if you don't have credibility, you can run. Even if you already have a record of corruption, you can still run. Well, it is not actually a problem if you think about it as long as the Filipinos do not vote for them and only vote for those candidates who are actually capable. Then it is not a problem if they run. But that is another main root of the Philippines' poverty because the majority of Filipinos keep voting for unworthy public servants. All right, so what are you saying? That we're wrong? Oh, everybody's wrong. I'm not saying that the Philippines never had good leaders and public servants because they actually did. And I am not saying that all Filipinos don't know how to identify worthy candidates, but sadly, the majority are not. You see, based on the historical election data in the Philippines, the candidate who is a well-known celebrity has the highest success rate in winning the election because the majority of people in this country keep voting for candidates who are famous instead of those who are actually deserving because of their excellent educational background. In other words, the majority of people are obsessed with putting celebrities in office. But that's not the worst. The worst thing is that they keep voting for the same person or the same family to become their public officials. Yes, I am talking about the political dynasties that have been happening in the Philippines for centuries. If you're going to review the history of the Philippines, you will notice that many powerful families have already been elected to office, generation by generation. From the president down to barangay officials, political dynasty is noticeable in this country. 
You will be surprised if I tell you that in some parts or provinces of the Philippines, only one clan has been governing the land for decades. But what if I told you that that was not the longest political dynasty ever recorded in this country? Well, in Laonyan, Philippines. There is a political clan that is believed to have had the longest political dynasty for over a century. Oh, that was too many years of service, right? This clan should already have made their own kingdom. Speaking of kingdoms, these clans in every political dynasty are already insanely rich people in the Philippines. So it is not surprising that if you rank the richest people in this nation, most of them are from the political dynasty. I think you already have a clear understanding of why the Philippines has been poor until now. Believe me, if this nation has good governance with a zero to low rate of corruption, it will become one of the richest countries not only in Asia, but in the world. Every opportunity for wealth exists in the Philippines. From the abundance of natural resources, to access to the ocean, to a lot of tourist destinations, there are many skilled Filipinos, not only in this country, but all over the world. And this country also has many citizens who can speak English. This country almost has the key to becoming a first world country, except for good governance. But having good governance will remain a dream if the people in this country keep electing corrupt and unworthy politicians. And in order to achieve that, every Filipino should become aware of who is really deserving to serve the country. And the key? Well, it is education. You see, this country is still considered to have a weak education system because Filipino students are still among the world's weakest in math, reading comprehension and science according to the global assessment, with the country ranking 77th out of 81 countries and performing worse than the global average in all categories. But not only that, in the Philippines nearly 20% of Filipino children are not attending school or do not have access to school. And that is one of the big reasons why the majority of Filipinos can be easily fooled by the propaganda of corrupt politicians and political dynasties. And if all Filipinos have access to a good education, they will soon realize that their nation actually needs good leaders, and they will raise their standard in selecting government officials. Well, this matter is not only happening in the Philippines. Corruption and bad governance are also happening in all poor countries around the world. But one thing you can notice in every rich country is that they prioritize the education of the next generation over anything else. And if the Philippines do that as well, perhaps someday this country will become one of the rich countries in Southeast Asia.